How's it going everyone? It's Sam. I want to talk to you about what a cryptocurrency is. And I realize that there are a lot of people that already understand what cryptos are, but also there are a lot of people that have no idea. Anyone that has been investing in crypto is really early on. And I think it is hard for a lot of new investors because there are so many videos on cryptocurrency out there right now. And everyone that's been in this phase right now is getting kind of in the weeds, right? We're looking at specific cryptocurrencies, looking at price action, looking at big events. And for a lot of people, it might sound like a different language. So we're gonna talk about some of the basics of cryptocurrency here today, and hopefully it really helps you out. If you guys get some value on this, definitely hit the like button and then subscribe to the channel. You can also save this somewhere and then come back to it in case you want to learn more about cryptocurrencies and you maybe forget something, you can come back to this video. Also, you can share it to someone else. So what is a cryptocurrency? We're gonna cover that, we're gonna cover why you might be excited, what is happening in crypto right now, uh, what is going to happen with crypto in the future, will they go up forever, right? Is Dogecoin going to $1,000 like some people say? Where do you buy it and all this kind of stuff? So. Thank you guys for hitting that like button. Thank you for hitting subscribe and let's get into it. So the main point of cryptocurrency is to decentralize currencies. It's to put the responsibility into our hands instead of the governing bodies, right? So instead of giving all the power to the government or to the banks, we take it upon ourselves to hold that responsibility. Now, I will say uh, these, these are volatile, right? You might have heard about these from your next door neighbor that made $10,000 overnight in cryptocurrencies or your degenerate brother who lost $5,000 overnight. You know, there are all different kinds of people that are investing in this and there are all different kinds of stories. We also have celebrities that are endorsing it now from several NFL players to NBA players to celebrities, uh, Mr. Wonderful, right, Kevin O'Leary. There are all different kinds of people that are interested in it. There are banks that are allowing their clients to buy it now here in the US. There's El Salvador that as a country is making it legal tender. And they're saying, hey, you can't just use US dollars. You actually have to accept Bitcoin now as payment too. There are all different kinds of use cases for cryptocurrencies, which we'll go over a couple here in a moment. But you might have heard about some buzzwords such as blockchain, such as mining. So what is a blockchain? Well, this is the distributed, decentralized, and oftentimes public ledger that records these different kinds of transactions on a cryptocurrency. So this is what powers cryptocurrency. This is what brings the power away from the governing bodies. Now, there are a couple different ways to secure this. You might have heard of proof of stake or proof of work or proof of authority. There are all different kinds of ways to secure this which we won't get into them here today, but there are different pros and cons to each of them. Some people talk about how energy inefficient Bitcoin is. That is because of the way that they secure the network. Now, there are thousands and thousands of different cryptocurrencies. So the most well-known one is Bitcoin, then Ethereum, and then you can go down the line. You might've heard about Dogecoin recently. There are all different kinds of cryptocurrencies with different use cases. A couple of them we can go over real quick. Bitcoin often thought of as a, as a store of value. This is like digital gold. This is a way to stop inflation. This was written in the code, so you can't change this. 21 million Bitcoin will be in the supply and about 18.8 .8 million are already out there. So as time goes on, these different transactions on the Bitcoin network are verified and the people or the companies the computers that verify these transactions get rewarded with new Bitcoin. So there's a set amount. It doesn't matter how many people start verifying Bitcoin transactions. There's a set, there's a set amount for that network to get in rewards for verifying the transactions over time. So with that being said, a lot of people look at that compared to something like the US dollar and say, hey, I wanna put some of my money in Bitcoin because it can't just be inflated 5% a year. So that's why a lot of people invest in Bitcoin. Now, Ethereum. Ethereum is similar to like the internet. So Bitcoin, digital gold, digital property, there's only so much of it. Ethereum is like the internet. Things are built on top of it. It is the base layer that a lot of things are built on top of. So that is where Ethereum comes in. A lot of different decentralized apps, NFT platforms, a lot of different things can be built on Ethereum. Cardano similar to Ethereum, really is like an internet, but it's very early stages. 
There are all different kinds of cryptocurrencies from there that we can go into, but one other one that's pretty different that I want to cover is VeChain. VeChain is really focused on the supply chain. It focuses on traceability of products, allowing customers to know if their product is authentic and the location the product was shipped from and where it has been. So it's a way to really validate the supply chain. So they have a lot of big partnerships with large companies that you would actually know the names of. Now, Price Waterhouse Coopers is one of the big four accounting firms, and they are actually partners with VeChain, but there are a lot of other companies that you would know the names of that they work with also. And these companies include Walmart and BMW, but I think having one of the top four accounting firms really speaks to the credibility of VeChain. Will these cryptocurrencies go up forever? Will Dogecoin, that's only 25 cents, will that get up to Ethereum's price of $3,000? No. So you have to realize the price of different assets in cryptocurrencies and in stocks don't really matter. Sure, if we see Dogecoin go to 50 cents, we know that it doubled, but you have to look at the market cap. So all these can have different circulating supplies, just like a company, right? You can, you can chop a company up into as many pieces as you want. Will Dogecoin hit $3,000? No. If it hits $1, you have to take this $32 billion market cap and multiply it by four, which is about uh, about $130 billion. If it hits $3, it's the size of Ethereum. If it hits, let's say it hits $1,000, that would be about 10 times the market cap of gold. That would be almost the entire securities market if Dogecoin went up to $1,000. So that is not gonna happen. You have to look at the market cap, not just the price. That's a good rule of thumb for stocks also. Now, something that's important to keep in mind too is that all these different cryptocurrencies have their own teams behind them. They have developers, they have uh, people working on marketing and on their website and all different kinds of things. You have to realize too that they go through updates. These are not all set in stone. A lot of them are updating. Like EIP-1559, that was an upgrade to Ethereum recently that actually causes the circulating supply to become a little bit less inflationary. We can kind of get in the weeds on that, and I've talked about that upgrade a, a couple times on the channel, but there are updates that improve these different cryptocurrencies. These are projects that people work on. So that's something to take into account, and a lot of people try to invest before these big events happen. Now, how do you actually buy these cryptocurrencies? Because it's great to talk about these different cryptos, but if you can't buy them, it's not really useful. Well, there are a couple different ways to do it. The easiest way is probably buying them on something like Robinhood or Webull. There is a link down to Webull down in the description, but a lot of people don't really want to buy on these because a lot of the time you can't transfer these cryptos out of these different apps. So let's say you buy Dogecoin and you bought it at a cent and now it's worth 25 cents. You would actually have to sell it if you want to move it anywhere else which is kind of a pain because you would have to take a taxable event. A lot of these other applications that are really built for crypto, you can actually transfer to other wallets. So you can actually transfer from let's say BlockFi over to Voyager and there's no taxable event. But with these different apps like Webull and Robinhood, you can't do that. Another way to do it is you could get something like Coinbase or like Binance or Voyager or BlockFi. I use Voyager and BlockFi the most. There are links underneath the video. They do pay interest rates. So there's always some risk that comes with this because there's no such thing as a free lunch, as they say, but you can actually get an interest rate on your cryptocurrencies there. What they do is they essentially take it and then they lend it out to someone else. So of course they make sure that the other party has collateral, but there's always some risk of default. That is always something you have to consider. You can actually earn that yield, like I said, which is pretty nice over time if you can get five, six, seven, eight, even 12, up to 12%. From there, you can also have something like a hard wallet, which is like a little thumb drive, and you can put cryptos on there. Now, that has its own risk and reward. You have to be very responsible, I think, if you have one of those, because if you forget the password or you throw it out or your significant other throws it out or there's a fire, you're not getting that crypto back. So if you have millions of dollars on it, it just up in flames like that. So that's something to consider when you are using one of those. From there, you can have something like Trust Wallet. It's another app that's a little bit less centralized than BlockFi or Voyager, and that's right on your phone. We covered what cryptocurrencies are, 
what is securing them, what they do. We talked about how to buy them. Now, what do you actually buy? What makes the most sense to buy? Well, Bitcoin is the least volatile of all the cryptocurrencies. And you might be saying, whoa, I thought Bitcoin went up 10x this year. It did, <laughs> but a lot of these other cryptocurrencies went up even more than that. So Bitcoin is what a lot of people start in and then they move over to maybe Ethereum or Cardano and then they go down the line and get more and more into these smaller cryptocurrencies. If you want a really good return, you are going to have to invest most likely in some of these smaller cryptocurrencies, but there's more risk. Now, I'm not saying that Bitcoin won't have a really good return, but if you hear about someone going from $100 up to $10,000, they probably bought a smaller cryptocurrency because that is literally a 100X, which is an insane amount of money that they've gained. So if you want a 100X gain, you have to get into some smaller cryptocurrencies. Now, like I said, you're still gonna get really good returns probably in the top cryptocurrencies. I'm much more invested in the top cryptocurrencies because I'm not trying to lose 90% of my money anytime soon. And that's definitely a possibility. It is still a, is a possibility in the top cryptocurrencies, but it's more of a possibility in the smaller cryptocurrencies. You're gonna have to look at your own risk tolerance. You're gonna have to look at your own goals. What do you wanna do? And that's gonna really inform your decision. You also need to know what the cryptocurrencies are, right? You have to do research. You're putting money into things that aren't really easy to understand at first. So you have to do your research. There is something called the crypto winter too, which is a period of time where cryptos generally are bearish. They go down in price for usually a couple of years, honestly. And that is that is often based on the Bitcoin having cycle, which is something for a totally different video. But just know the dollar cost averaging is probably a good way to go. If you are looking at this and you have $5,000, dollar cost averaging or putting money in over time instead of all in one lump sum is probably a good way to go because that's a good thing for your own mental state. You can invest all up front, but if Bitcoin and Ethereum and Cardano fall down 60%, you might get freaked out. There will be people that want to push it down even more because they want to create fear so that you sell when it's already at a very discounted price so they can buy even lower. There are billionaires that are just waiting to get in on cheap cryptocurrencies. If you dollar cost average over time, usually stay a little bit more level headed. So that is something to consider. Find something that is in a growing industry that has more and more partnerships, that has more mass adoption, that has a competitive advantage. That's why I talked about VeChain because I really do think that they are the leader in supply chain management in cryptocurrency. And that's easy to say because it's pretty obvious, but there are other cryptocurrencies that are leaders in their space. And that's where you should really look. Look for things that have upgrades in the distant future. Now, if you buy something like Cardano has a big upgrade tomorrow, if you buy that here today, anything can happen. I'm talking about look months out. Now, of course, that could always be pushed back. There's always risk, but that is my advice. Find something that has an upgrade. Find something that has a growing use case and buy, hold long term. Get some interest if you can or if you feel comfortable with that. And then try to dollar cost average. But let me know if you guys have any more questions. I would be more than willing to do a second video for this. Thank you for hitting the like button and the subscribe button. And I will see you in the next video.